Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Grand Tactician, the Civil War, a Civil War strategy and war game that we've been playing for quite a bit now uh, as the Confederacy. In this game, we are getting close to a Confederate victory. National morale for the Union has to fall to 25. It's at 36 right now uh, because we've won pretty much almost all the battles, not all of them. We've lost a couple of Big battles in Kentucky recently, which has driven us back into Tennessee. Uh, but we have taken Washington, D.C., and we've pushed uh, a fairly far into Maryland, which is currently still, I guess, a Union state, but I think it might shift soon. Also, there's this like weird pocket of resistance in Virginia, but overall, we've done really well in, in the war. Um, the main thing I think that we need to do in order to really push further and get... Uh, you know, get get this war in the bag is probably to defeat these armies in Kentucky. We've suffered some defeats there, and so the Army of Tennessee is rehabilitating uh, under Albert Sidney Johnson. Our left wing of the army has about, uh, I don't even know, that's not even the left wing that I selected. Uh, the left wing of the army has about 14,000 soldiers. Uh, the right wing of the army, and I don't know why the left wing is on the right, um, but I think the, uh, where is the right wing? They might actually both be, where, where the hell are they? Yeah. Okay. So the left wing of the army is in Nashville. We've also got the right wing of the army in Nashville, which about another 20,000 men. So we've got about 34,000 troops there. They're currently recovering from their defeats. Uh, and then we also have a core that we're raising of about 13,000 more troops under a major general, John Pemberton. So all told, we'll have about 50,000 troops in central Tennessee, ready to push back into Kentucky. Hopefully in the next month or two. It is December, so it's sort of the winter season. Uh, we also have a corps of troops under Al or, uh, Joseph E. Johnston along the Mississippi River, as well as uh, Sterling Price's headquarters for the Army of the West uh, along the Mississippi River, just to the south of the Kentucky border. Uh, and then we've also taken St. Louis with about 13,000 soldiers under Major General George Porterfield. His corps is in good shape. There doesn't seem to be any real threat his formation there. The bulk of the federal armies seem to be bulked down here along the Mississippi and Kentucky and then sort of in central Kentucky. Uh, we have had some success, as I already said. We took Washington. In the last episode, we re we defended Washington against a Union counterattack, and now our forces in Virginia and Maryland are largely trying to rehabilitate and uh, recover from losses they've taken. We are recruiting about 25,000 new troops in Richmond. About another 20,000 troops are being raised in Nashville, we are trying to even the numbers game a little bit. Uh, we'll never recruit as many troops as the Federals, but uh, we are narrowing that gap a bit. And it helps that the casualties have been very lopsided in our favor, 155,000 Federal casualties to 85,000 Confederate casualties. Our credit rating is an A-, minus, which is pretty darn good for this period of the war. We haven't raised too many troops. We actually have some states with like 15,000-plus recruits available. We've pretty much drained Virginia and Tennessee but then like Alabama and Georgia both have 10,000 plus. We haven't really recruited many troops there. For the most part, with the exception of the Texas division, which we raised, uh, we've largely recruited as local to the combat as possible, which means the Deep South's economy is in pretty, pretty good shape. By the way, some one is me. Thank you for the Prime sub. Appreciate the support now. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's where we are right now. It's December of 62. Uh, we'll kind of get things going a little bit. I don't think the federals are going to push too hard right now it's winter so everybody's kind of recuperating from uh from the last year of combat well i should be making it into 1863 which i haven't played a war into 63 before we do have this third corps moving down uh to try and take this pocket of uh i think the federals moved an army down here and they did all right so we're gonna fight a battle right away against Nathaniel Banks. It's going to be the third corps of the Army of Northern Virginia in Vir fighting in Virginia against Nathaniel Banks. It looks like we have about equal numbers. So the fourth corps of the Army of the Potomac versus the third corps of the Army of Northern Virginia, James Longstreet versus Nathaniel Banks. I know I'd put my money on, but I guess we'll find out. The Battle of New Market on December 7th, 1862. Pep 86, thank you for the resub. Appreciate the support as well. How's the naval side of things, Coffee? Well, we've largely ignored the naval side of things. I did want to maybe do another, like another episode or another game of this where you're playing as the North and you really focus on amphibious operations, like push down the Mississippi, take the coastal ports before you push too hard on the center of the Confederacy. 
see how the amphibious side of the war goes. Um, but I haven't needed to do that much as the Confederacy, which to be fair, like the Confederacy poured a fair amount of resources into naval stuff, but they were never, they were never going to stop the Northern Navy in real life. So I think on the Confederate side, you can ignore that stuff. The Federals have done a bad job. The AI Federals have done a really bad job of trying to put any pressure on the coast. Like they're blockading, but they're not really landing amphibious landings. They didn't take New Orleans. They haven't done any of those things. So they're doing a really bad job on the naval side of things to like constrict the blockade. But as the Confederacy, we're doing about what we would need to, given there's been very little pressure there. Okay, 17,000 and 21 guns. So let's take a look here. Federals. Can I see any breakdown? Their fighting spirit's not great. They have three divisions. First, second, third. 21 guns. Some Ohio, New York troops, some Illinois and Indiana artillery. Okay. The first division. Okay. All right. I mean, I guess I guess we'll see what we've got in store for us, right? Fourth Corps, 16,000 infantry, 200 artillery. No cavalry by the looks of it. Meanwhile, we've got 17,000 infantry, 400 artillery, no cavalry either. All right, this is a attacking battle, so our job is to assault the Federals. Where is the objective on the map? Sperryville Road down here. Let's move the core down this way. Probably just move down this main road and maybe cross down here. Looks like there's a lot of open terrain down here. Moving through, through Manor Hill. No reason to use any engineering points either. So we'll zoom in here. And first division to move will be Cooper's because he's like right on the roadway. So let's move Cooper down here toward Bushing Mill. And once he starts moving, then we'll move Smith. Actually, no, we'll move Davidson, which all of his troops should be on the side of the river. They are. Also, it looks like there's snow on the ground. It's foggy and 27 degrees. Ooh, it's a chilly day. So, yeah. Burr. All right, his troops are moving. So we should have the order for his troops to move down toward the uh, ford or bridge near Stair. It's 8 in the morning, so it's an early, early day. And then Smith will move once Davidson starts moving. Up tiered forever. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate the support. So I'm going to try and issue my orders in a little bit more of a uh, staggered way to prevent clogging up the roads too much as I usually do in my games, which causes units to move very slowly. So Cooper's well underway. Davidson has not started to move. That's because the courier hasn't gotten there yet. Or he just hasn't started moving. I don't actually see any courier waiting. But I do have the... Okay, Davidson's starting to move. Then we'll move Smith down toward the Matthews Courthouse. And I guess the artillery will move last. Maybe not the smart thing to do. I don't know. But Actually, the artillery should probably have moved earlier because Smith is on the outside track of any march. So we'll wait for the infantry to get past before we issue the order. All right, this is actually shaping up pretty nicely. These guys are getting on the road. About in sequence of what I would expect. We'll move the artillery down here. As the infantry is already moving past them, the artillery may actually move more quickly because they are horse drawn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one division. I'm going to move Cooper's division across the bridge at Bushing Mill, and they're going to come down this roadway to the east down toward the objective on the other side of the river. 
to maybe flank the enemy. Well, that's not where I want you to go. I want you to move down this road right here. Now, this is a little bit risky because we're separating one division by a pretty good, good margin, presumably from where Longstreet will be, so that'll cause things to bunch up a bit. Would I consider Rome total or RTW2? Sorry, Rome, I'm assuming you're saying rule the waves too. Or did you mean Rome? I have played rule the waves on the channel. I would definitely consider playing it again. I will certainly be playing rule the waves three whenever that comes out. Um, although I think my next naval series will probably be, and I don't think I've seen it post yet, but there's a pretty big update coming to ultimate admiral dreadnoughts, which I have not played in a while, uh, which I believe adds quite a bit of, uh, changes to the, the campaign. I think it's like a global map now with like almost all the nations. All right. So we'll have Cooper move around this way. Hey, big bang. Thanks for the prime sub. Appreciate the support. I'm guessing the enemy is defending up here on the actual objective based on what little we're seeing in the way of uh, enemy units so far. So I'm going to continue issuing orders appropriately. Smith's division, you'll move to the road uh, crossing down here. Davidson, you're going to move here. Although if the troops are here, you're probably not going to make it there. Almost one year, Big Bang. Appreciate it. You know what we really need, and oh, someone's shooting, right? I hear artillery. Oh shit, they're there. Oh boy. Um. Well, shit. Who's all shooting? Do I hit infantry? Oh, I guess these guys are firing at skirmishers. So the enemy's in a weird position here. They've got skirmishers across the river, and entrenchments across the river. Can I march right in behind him, though? All right, so let's, I guess, you're going to move here. Cooper, you're going to move here, I guess. I mean, I don't know what the right way is to get them there. Is there a fort here, like, that they can move across? It looks like it, maybe? Meanwhile, Longstreet's with Smith's division, which is down here in the southern end. This is a really confusing battle. You want to buy the game, but the AI is really putting you off. I've heard the A the AI is, gets better <laughs> um, later war. I, I don't know if that's true or not. Could it be because the uh, historical generals were so bad in 62 that the AI is just modeled appropriately? Okay, so this is a strange deployment, but the victory point is also kind of strange. Hancock's deploying north. It looks like Samuel Fulkerson's going across the river here. This must be a fort, by the looks of it. All right, let's speed things along a bit. Hey, he's going across right there. Oh, shit. Play, play, don't, don't get all of you killed. All right, Fulkerson. Can you just halt? Like, I don't want you to pull back across the river. Artillery is going to deploy here. Smith's division here is facing Howard's brigade in the south. I think Smith should be okay. He's got two brigades in position. Howard might advance on him, but the only downside is my brigades are kind of overlapping each other, so they're not supporting as much as they could. So Howard has how many men in his brigade? 2,300? I've probably got that many muskets on the line between the 1,800 and then half a Smith's brigade. Let's see if we can flank him. Longstreet's like down with the lead division. 
Meanwhile, two thirds of his force is facing off up here to the right. Too accurate. All your generals below. <laughs> yeah, kind of a little bit, right? All right, Fulkerson, you, you're halted, so that's good. So let me go ahead and deploy here. And then we've got Cooper, who's coming across the river, so he'll deploy on the left. The Federals still have a fair number of troops in these trenches here, but they've also deployed some troops out in the open. So I'm hoping I can get Fulkerson or Cooper's division out and uh, maybe deploy on Fulkerson's left. You know, the artillery's coming up into positions to fire into the Federal flank if they're not in musket range. I do like how the AI uses skirmishers. The AI is much better at using skirmishers than I am. Second Federal Brigade coming in, 2,300 troops. It looks like Howard's pulling back slightly. We've got another 2,300 Federals and Cox's Brigade. So we got a nice little division size fight down here in the south. There you can see Johnson, Bushrod Johnson's brigades losing fairly heavily. The nice thing is with Kirby Smith right behind him, that brigade's not taking any punishment, more or less. And then we've got uh, Colquette's brigade deploying against it as well. You think Howard isn't routed, he's just withdrawing, so he may come back up. But we've got a nice little division sized fight going on in the south. In the north, we've got two brigades coming down kind of behind their lines. We are losing some. And artillery fires. We kind of march across the open here. How about you guys deploy and just harass the enemy with musketry? You know, we're trying to get across this ford, which I didn't even know was a ford up here. And uh, Hancock and Garfield skirmishers being driven in a bit by the first volley under Fulkerson. About 2,000 rifled muskets here. Girls are dug in here, which is not very nice for us. Maybe we can drive off some of this artillery and bring uh, Benjamin McCullough's brigade down on these Federals here. We can hit them from two sides, perhaps. Got James Cantney's brigade coming across also. And right, so right now the game is still claiming a minor victory for us at the moment. At least that's what things look to be on track for. Largely because of the success we're having in the south, another brigade, a fourth brigade coming up. It also helps that a lot of these federal troops appear to have been recently defeated, and I believe it was just a little while ago that we defeated these guys, um, the fourth corps. I want to say it was near Frederick, Maryland, and then they withdrew south because technically they had uh, control of the territory down here. But uh, they've also, they're sort of blinking red here, which indicates their morale sucks, and I believe that's because we've trounced their core not too not too long ago although that will change very quickly if they uh, start to route our troops in the open here with their, their guys in the trenches in the south I think we will be okay though because we've got troops to their front and flank in the south we do have a soft spot for Hancock I'd like to see his brigade fight well because there are times when a core commander's life does not count he wrecked that first battery. Thanks for the follow, uh, Jacob. And no Barb. Hey, look at that. People in my friends list jumping onto Terra Invicta. Really a game I gotta give a look to. Gotta give a look-see. I don't think this battle is gonna end up in a major victory. I do think we will probably pick up a victory. Things are moving very quickly in that direction, but we're not gonna inflict enough casualties on the enemy. For a major victory, I don't think. I'm curious what the enemy does when they don't have a friendly line of communication to move to. Like, they're in a pocket of federal territory in Virginia, but they have no path back to northern territory in Pennsylvania. So do they just keep withdrawing further and further into the south? And do they eventually melt away? I don't know. Hey, Index, how you doing? Yes, I would agree. LMF that the game is very, the AI is very reactive. 100% agree. 
you know, when I was playing it originally, when it was in the very early stages of Early Access, and it looks like we routed the Federals in the South, when I was playing the game in the early stages of Early Access, the AI was very passive, and so I think they made some changes to try and remedy that, because there were times where the enemy would have a line, and it would just let you literally march around the flank, and it wouldn't respond to you at all. And so, I think... I mean, they've definitely made marked improvements in the AI, and I think one of the things that they did was they made the AI react more to your movements. I think they may have overdone it a little bit, in that, like, you can move a brigade or two onto an enemy course flank, and rather than, like... So sometimes they'll refuse their line, but a lot of times it seems like they will abandon entrenched positions in order to respond to your flanking maneuver. And so, like, a situation like this, where they have a strong parapet defense, they may move out of if you threaten their flank. Which, in some situations, would be the right move. In other situations, it would not be. And so, I just, I think the game is not always great at, like, understanding the nuance of when it should do certain things, and when should it reposition, when should it just shift, you know, things like that. Um, which is hard. Like, that's a hard thing to code a game to understand. And I don't know that there's ever been a game that's done a good job of it, to be honest. Um, I think games like Ultimate General or even Scourge of War do okay because the scenarios tend to be far more scripted. Um, and so you can give key points and key reactions and, and it's kind of assumed where the enemy will come in. A game like Grand Tactician has a very difficult challenge because everything is so open uh, and even the battlefields are so open that you can't really make assumptions about what your guest side is going to do where your troops are going to come from like it's it's a much more difficult game i think to try and get those things right um so you know it is it is what it is and, and you know it's not like total wars ever had a good ai so But anyway, we've won this battle. We've won a victory. We've inflicted pretty considerable casualties on the Federals, uh, although not to major victory standards. About 14% of their army is casualties. Only 4.3% of ours. We've lost less than 1,000 men. Wow. All right. We're not going to get another 10% of their army casualties in the next 40 minutes, though. They're retreating through our lines. It's like the, the movie The Patriot. We're just chasing them across the field. An enemy unit has disintegrated with many men surrendering. Oh, sweet! The enemy brigade under Major General John Cox Jr. was thoroughly wiped out. 1,800 men have been captured. I think that's one of the brigades that was trying to retreat through our lines. That very rarely happens. So there you go. We actually got a major victory now. Over 30% of their, or about 30% of their army is uh, is casualties now. Trying to get cavalry to run around fleeing troops makes your eyes bleed. Yeah, that's interesting. We had no cavalry here, and we still we managed to get an enemy unit to surrender. Well, that's funny. Well, there you go. Maybe it has something to do with how high their morale was because they recently lost another battle. So it could be morale-based also. Anyway, that's a huge victory. Oh, yeah, yeah. 800 to 5,000. 4,800 infantry of their 17,000 are casualties. All 20 of their guns are destroyed. They lost just shy of a third of their force. We lost 800 of 17,000. A major victory for the Confederates, which give us gives us a higher morale boost or whatever, national, national morale, um, and uh, hopefully should help to counter some of those major defeats that we suffered recently. Should drop their, like, national war whatever by about a percent. National morale drops by a percent. Now we're going to have to follow it up and fight more battles until they withdraw to the southern territory. We'll see which direction they go. Meanwhile, winter quarters for the rest of the troops. Enjoy your hot coffee. Well, if you have coffee. <laughs> Sorry, Confederates. Maybe you can have some hot cocoa.
Glorious victory at Newmarket. The fourth corps is fleeing in panic. General Cox Jr. loses face, you'd think, because his unit surrendered. The Battle of Newmarket has ended with the fourth corps retreating in panic. My command has earned us a total victory. The enemy army running for their lives. The enemy has reportedly suffered a total of 4,918 casualties, 339 killed, 2,675 captured, including the 1,800 in that one unit. Their morale is believed to be nervous. Our losses are 804 men, 121 killed, 119 missing. Uh, we've captured 3,875 rifles and 12 guns from the battlefield. 2,700 enemy soldiers have been captured and taken to our prisoner of war camps, which are already massively overcrowded. We've got 28,000 prisoners in the Charlottesville prison camp, 17,000 in the Charleston prison camp. That's 45,000 federal prisoners. I have played that cannibal clown. Uh, Sumter to Appomattox. I actually have a video, a very early video on the channel. It's very bad quality, but I have a very early video on the channel of me playing that game, which by the way, I love the way they handle the blockade running in uh, Sumter to Appoma Appomattox, like where you have to actually manually load a certain amount of cotton or whatnot onto your transports to send them to Europe. Like the whole way they handle the coastal elements of things in that game, I think is better than any game I've seen to this date. Although I haven't played a lot of Union where I've been like actively blockading in this, so maybe this is different. Although it was in, an incredibly buggy mess otherwise. All right, so looks like the 4th Corps is routing north and through our lines. They may be getting some rear guard like penalties and things like that because they're moving through our positions. They've got 7,500 men left. And they're withdrawing west. Okay. Well, the third corps pursue northwest. I'm assuming they're going to withdraw into uh, western Pennsylvania, is that? Officer rehabilitated. I don't even remember who Albert Pike was or what he did. All right, so it is now December 12th. Do we have an army down there? Doesn't look like it. I don't see any federal push anywhere. It, looks, it seems like most of these guys are enjoying winter quarters, which I can't blame them. I'm still working on recruiting troops in some of these units, so I don't want to push too hard. Uh, okay, Zapala has fallen. That's in Mexico, the French invasion of Mexico. All right. Fourth Corps withdrew off to the west. Third Corps is taking its time. Oh, shit. Second Corps is moving south. Where are they headed toward? Second Corps, 26, 22,000 soldiers. We only have 10,000 with Magruder. What's the situation with the other seven that we're recruiting? One day, four days, 22 days. So we'll get some more troops. Uh, do we have any other troops we can send toward Washington? Because it seems like they're going that direction. Let's send the Army of Virginia up this way. Although that's a long way. They won't get there in time. First Coroner Lee will send you guys that way also. 15,000 troops. Well, they're headed south and they're going to fight us and none of my other troops moved. So we've got Major General John Peck. Can we deploy to defend? We're technically in a fort, right? We could take a siege. Oh, it's only 17,000. Well, 5,000 cavalry, so 22,000 total. So they do about outnumber us about two to one. It would be nice to win a major victory. Magruder's boys fought a uh, last stand near Washington not that long ago. It also looks like Baltimore is about to fall back into their hands. So let's fight this battle. I don't want to wait. I don't want to lose Baltimore. 
We'll see if we can hold Aqueduct Bridge with just uh, half as many troops as the Federals. I've heard of War College Cannibal, but I've never played it. But yeah, American Civil War from Sumter to Appomattox. An interesting game. So we're outnumbered just a little bit less than 2 to 1. Infantry is much closer than 2 to 1. Cavalry is what pushes it up that way. I'm assuming I just have to hold a position, so I could probably set up some earthworks or things like that, depending on where the objective is. All right, everybody, I know this is on the shorter end of what I usually do, but we're about to fight a battle near Washington, D.C. That is a rather long engagement, and so we will pick this up in our next episode. I hope you guys did enjoy our return to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. We are going to play this thing through until the end. We're going to fight it out on this line all summer, if it takes so. Although, I guess summer's over. Sorry, Grant. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll fight this thing out until we win it. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.